Hey guys, Randy here, coming at you with another product review, and this time it is for the, let me show it here right here, Zoomy. This is a Zoomy tripod. This is the Q555 tripod, and I've got it fully extended so you give me an idea of how tall this thing is, and as I try to dodge my head around the tripod here so you can see what's going on, I did go ahead and mount my smartphone on here so that you can see kind of how, how <laughs> the thing lines up with my head if you're trying to film yourself using this tripod. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", maybe even 5'11 and a half wearing tennis shoes. So you can see what kind of height adjustment you can get. I believe I've got this thing fully extended, the legs fully extended out, the neck fully raised up. So everything is <laughs> is set up so as high as it will possibly go. And one of the things I like to do in my videos is I like to have the camera slightly pointing down at me so that it kind of makes my face look thinner <laughs> and uh, it kind of hides my double chin so this one would would be really good if I'm sitting down or on a bar stool that kind of thing but I think it's a little bit too short for my needs but this is a pretty cool looking tripod I just want to kind of point out some of the benefits and features of it the things I like the best about it when I first unboxed it noticed it right away was it has it's pick this thing up and move it closer to the camera so you can see it better and maybe rotate it around a bit for you here. It has the kind of a standard attachment as far as mounting your camera on top. It has this little screw here that opens up a clamp on top and the clamp has this metal aluminum metal plate with I believe what's a standard <coughs> screw adapter or, or screw attachment. I have never uh, never had a DSLR camera. This thing is made for DSLR, DSLR cameras and I don't own a professional camera like that. I'll either have the little camcorder I'm recording with <laughs> or I use this to hold my smartphones. And this little screw on here fits both the camera, the base plate on my camera and it fits the little adapter for my smartphone. So I think this is a standard screw size for all DSLR cameras as well. So let me put him back in there quickly if I can. So it tightens up pretty quick. Uh, one of the other things I noticed about it right away that I did like, well actually I'll show you two things at once. <laughs> Number one, it's got a, a uh, level, a bubble level in there so you can get everything leveled up just right. And the other th feature I liked about it a whole lot when I first saw the picture on Amazon was this 90 degree head. I have a, the, the tripod I'm using to hold the camera I'm recording with has a adjustable arm. The arm goes up and down, but I cannot adjust the camera completely down. I can't, I can't go 90 degrees down. The handle stops at a certain point and it's just not designed to do an overhead completely downward shot, which is, comes in handy sometimes. I think this would be pretty handy uh, on the way I do my videos trying to get death, my shots of my desktop and sometimes my little tiny tripod is just it's just too big and I can't get the kind of shot I would like when I'm recording my other uh, spinner videos and and product reviews that are that require a desktop shot and let's see make sure that's tightened up good for you and so it does have this little adjuster here so that it will rotate back and forth one of the things I first noticed was that if I would rotate it counterclockwise to begin with, it would loosen up. There's a, a screw in here and there's a, a tightener ring right here. So I had to crank down on that a couple turns and give it a good good tight turn and that fixed my problem. So you got the little adjuster here so you can see the little marker here so you can find your mark, remember your mark, tighten down and the head locks in place. And then Along with that, you have these other two adjusters. It took me a little while to figure out the point of these because I'm just not that big into photography and needing a tripod for all kinds of uses. But essentially, <laughs> this, these two control the ball head. So you can tighten one up to a, a certain tightness before it locks in place and it won't move at all. You can't really see that, but I'm trying to jerk it around. But you can adjust it out just a little bit so that it will move the other direction. This one tightens it going this way 
and this one tightens it going backwards and forwards towards me. So that's what these two knobs are designed to do. It took me a little while to figure that out, but at first it didn't make sense to me. Now it does. It comes in handy, or it will come in handy. And I like having the two-point locking system. That way the, the, the ball head really is secured and won't get jarred around as easily as if you had a single point of attachment here. So that's about about enough for the top of the head here. It does come with this little, this little strap, so if you want to pick it up and carry it off with you, the instructions say do not carry the camera attached to the to the tripod, so don't do that. <laughs> you, I mean, these little screws, I mean, look, we're looking at, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch of screw there, so if your DSLR is heavy, or your DSLR and your lens is heavy, and they can get pretty heavy. I've seen some big ones. My best friend has a DSLR, I think it's a Canon D90, and the camera itself weighs nothing, but he goes out doing wildlife photography, and he has a camera lens that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 pounds. So I would not suggest putting a DSLR with a extended lens. It's, you know, the lens is three feet long. Don't carry it around attached to this. Take it off, be safe. <laughs> One of the other things, if I can show you real quick, it's kind of weird to show you it this way, but basically it has, if I can get turned here a little bit and get up closer, you can see it's got a little hanger under here. I, don't, I got the hanger turned away the wrong way, of course. But you can see it, so you can put a sandbag under here for added stability when you're out there in a windy conditions. This will help keep everything stabilized, especially if you are have one of the longer lenses that might throw your camera off balance and for some reason, you know, you forget to put this leg here extended out under the lens for more stability. If you have it sideways like here and the lens is in between the two, it might get a gust of wind and blow it over so this will help add some more weight to it make it more stable for you out there in the field the other thing i liked about this it it took me a little while to figure out maybe 10 minutes to figure out to understand the instructions and uh and just get to working on it let me lower that back down but basically it's kind of hard to show you because everything is all black on this thing <laughs> but you can pull this headpiece completely out which I think is a neat feature. What you have to do, well, let me explain why you would want to pull the headpiece out. You can pull this headpiece out completely, flip it over, sh and put it up through the bottom, and this way you can do macro photography. You can set this up so that the camera is actually under here and facing straight down, or facing straight down. <laughs> and I think that would be pretty cool, maybe even on my desk. I might try that for one of my other spinner reviews and set this up on my desk with the camera under the bottom. But it's pretty simple and straightforward to, to do that. As far as flipping this neck piece over, it's uh, very easy once I figured out how to do it. What they, how simple they made it, it was too simple for me to figure out on the first try. But what you do is, under the bottom here, there's a little rubber grommet right here that kind of protects everything. Now that's not the part that actually unscrews because it is a little plate that's got the little uh, hanger that actually unscrews, see? So I unscrewed it a little bit, it fell out. This is the part that actually needs to be turned to unscrew it. You can see the threads there, no big deal. But uh, I pulled the little cap off just to make it easier on me. Slide it out just like that. And this thing does have a groove in there. Maybe you, see the, maybe you can see the groove right there. So you'll have to line that groove back up once you've put it under the bottom. See if I can do this on camera without looking too dumb. <laughs> see if I can, there it goes. So I just had to turn it a little bit to find, get the groove to line up so you can see if someone like me can figure out how easily to get this thing to, to go back together, you can too. <laughs> and I think this is like the, uh, this is really the second time I've done this. Maybe the third, probably just the second time I've done this. I did it once when I unboxed it to figure out to figure out how to do it correctly. So there you have. It. So you can adjust this back up and down as you like. If I can turn it just right where you can see it. And the the little tightener here still works. So once you get it in the height adjustment you would like, just tighten up the neck and you're good to go. 
Now let me turn it back over and put things back together so I can show you the way it, the way it folds back up. There, now I got that tightened back up. Just kind of, just a, like a quarter turn over finger tight when I tightened up the bottom screw after I flipped the camera head back over. So let me go ahead and adjust that back down. I adjusted it back down. I'm gonna lock that in place. And let's see what I'd like to do next. Right now I've got all the legs fully extended. So I'm gonna step back here so you can see the fully extended legs. So there are one, two, three, if you count this shafter here, it's a four-piece leg, and each one of them has a little flipper on it, so you can actually adjust it back and forth as you need it, and they just snap closed, and they lock in place. Now, one thing I do, about, do like about the legs is these are round instead of being, uh, I guess, rectangular or triangle-shaped. I like these round legs because, they, to me, it feels a little bit sturdier. They don't... There's no flex in them. With some of the uh, flat rectangular legs that I have on other tripods, <laughs> the, the two other tripods that I have, they feel kind of flimsy and you can shake them back and forth. This feels very sturdy and very steady. It's not wiggling back and forth. So let me step back here and I'll adjust the legs, get them all closed up. So, there you have it. See so how it all snaps, <laughs> snaps closed, locks the legs in place. Now this is not the final step, but I just wanted to show you one other thing before I move on to the final step of, of uh, putting this into its, a, into its packing position, <laughs> or carrying position, closed up position, is these little round rubber leg end pieces. Now these are, are at an angle, they have a cone shape to them, and that is kind of a handy feature as suppose as if they were just a flat surface it wouldn't have as I guess good a, a big a footprint on the ground so these little round ones actually can you know when you're when you got the leg folded out this little round tip gives you more of a gripper <laughs> a, a gripping surface for wherever you're standing it up so it works pretty good on this concrete floor and the final step on folding this up <laughs> is push on the leg, the little little uh, locking mechanism for the leg position, let it go all the way up. Click on this one, and click on this final one, and then kind of rotate the head around for the best position. And I did not do one of the step, and that is to loosen the neck up, loosen the neck up right here, and then slide that into position, tighten the neck back up so that it does not fall through, and then just kind of adjust the head around for, for the perfect folding position. <laughs> ah, I lost my words there for a second. Anyway, <laughs> so you can see how compact this thing is. I mean, let me step back a bit to show you. That's, that's about two feet maybe a little over two feet. My arm is three feet long. So you can see that it comes up to my, about to my, my elbow right there. So that's probably just a little hair over two feet long. And here's a little bag it comes in. So it's even pretty compact. Get this thing open. That was one of the surprising things. I was, I thought it was pretty cool design where it all, the legs not only you know, collapse, but then they fold up over the neck. So everything, goes into one really super compact form factor. Now, once I got that all back together, <laughs> get it all back in the little zoomy bag that comes with it, this is a this feels like a water resistant bag. Of course it's got a zipper on it so it's not waterproof so if you drop it in a lake it's gonna get water inside of it. But just uh, rain and light sprinkles probably isn't gonna penetrate this bag. Let me pull it back out to show you the one one trade-off. It could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. It just depends on on uh, your photography needs, I guess. 
And that is when you fold the legs back out and turn it back over. This is gonna be kind of big, but this is the easiest way for me to show you. The trade-off for having these legs that go completely back up to the top like that, you don't have that stabilizing three-point folding arm system like on some of the others. Uh, like on the camera tripod I'm using right here, the neck, this part right here, actually goes down into a shaft down below and that shaft has a sliding three-point legs, uh, three-point arm system that goes up and down and collapses and collapses and expands as the legs go up and down. So you have the additional stabilizer that pushes out on the legs and keeps them from closing when you pick this thing up. So that's the one little trade-off. I don't think it's a, uh, a, a deal killer, <laughs> but it really depends on I guess how much weight your tripod is carrying and what kind of uh, location situation you're, you're working in. But other than that, well, let's see, there is one thing. I did like, I do like having this little up and down arm on my other tripod. This little, this little, where you can reach out and you can shift it up, shift it down by hand. And since this, this one doesn't have that, that's kind of a, a, a not a hassle because once I get the tripod head in position I'm not going to move it again anyway but every time that I do a new video my and I'm sitting down my chair is in just a slightly different position so I'll have to adjust my chair to fit the tripod position or get up and adjust the tripod and then sit back down look at where I am on camera that kind of thing so that's one of the little trade-offs but I will happily <laughs> happily do that trade-off in exchange for being able to do this being able to loosen those two screws up and go 90 degrees down. I do like that. I mean, that's nice. So I, that's, that's my favorite feature about this one is this little ball head that will do a, a, will turn my camera completely down. So yeah. So that wraps it up for the Zumi Q555 tripod. Hopefully you got some value out of this and helps you decide whether you want a tripod with round legs and a ball head that goes completely vertical on you <laughs> or if you prefer a tripod that has a, an adjustable arm on it and has more uh, more stable stable legs when it comes to a, a, a separate system of, of uh, arms under the legs and the third thing I like about this little tripod is the fact that you can take this main camera shaft turn it completely over and put the camera down in between the legs like this to do overhead shots if you want to. So I hope you found this enlightening, fun, and <laughs> helps you make a decision on what kind of tripod you would like. So this is Randy, signing off for now, and I'll talk to you later.